It's that time again. I couldn't resist doing a few more pickups before my move, and that is upcoming very soon. So let's go over some of the games I was able to pick up in the last few weeks. I'm probably going to mess this up, but it's I believe it's called Musha for PS2. I got this bad boy for $9.99 at a game store recently. I believe it was recommended by Stephen Craig Retro Games. I even think it was in his $10 or less video, so you definitely should go check that out. Uh, this one is an action adventure game that combines like sword based combat with like puzzle solving elements from a third person perspective. You're navigating through like pre rendered backgrounds, which I guess is something they did with Resident Evil. Me being a big chicken, I don't really play scary games, but apparently that is what they say. The next one on my list, I couldn't help myself, a freaking Super Nintendo game for $3.99. Uh, turns out it is a rail shooter game for the Super Nintendo that requires a super scope, which I do have. It actually looks pretty fun. But apparently in Japan, this was also known as Space Bazooka, which I thought was really funny. But it's a rail shooting game involving like specific targeting, like for weak points on like mechs and dodging their attacks. You know, something I think that's pretty cut and dry, but I was really happy to add it to my Super Nintendo collection because you don't really find Super Nintendo games for really less than like, what, 12, 15 bucks anyway. Well, unless they're sports titles. If you follow my channel at all, you know I already own this game flat out for the PS2. However, if you watched my $10 or less videos, you'll know that my disc actually wouldn't work, even after resurfacing it twice. So I had to re-pick it up because I actually really loved the Flat Out series and I wanted to add this racing game back into my collection so I could actually play it. I was really bummed out when it didn't work. Um, I picked out Flat Out for $9.99, which again, proves my point. You can get it for $10 or less. The next one is Jumper Griffin Story. The reason I picked that up is because I had never seen it before. I had no idea what that was. But apparently it's not really focused on like the main character of like the movie franchise that came out with that one. But you play as Griffin in a like third person like action adventure game that emphasizes Griffin's unique like teleportation abilities in both like the combat and like puzzle solving. Um, it follows that typical trope of like evil people killed my parents so we got to go get revenge type thing. But apparently it didn't get like the best reviews, but for me when I see a title that I've never seen before and I've never heard anyone talk about it, I like to check it out for myself. Uh, I might have mentioned it before, but I've already played and beaten this game, but only on the definitive edition. And I heard rumors that the uh, older versions, they weren't as censored. I, there might be zero truth to that, but I went ahead and picked up Sleeping Dogs for the Xbox 360. I am perfectly okay with replaying this game in the future and trying to play it on a the original way that it was meant to be played. And so with Sleeping Dogs, you're playing as like an undercover cop in like a triad type thing. And the game is really good and you guys should definitely play it. Uh, the story is very strong. I would say it's better than any Grand Theft Auto game that I've played. There are very like unique missions that you end up going through. Now, I would say that sometimes the game can be a little bit repetitive, but this game has been so much fun to play and beat that I can imagine that this is a game I'll be playing like off and on throughout the rest of my life and that's how good it was for me. And I ended up paying $4.99 for Sleeping Dogs, which was a steal. The second game in my Sega Master System collection and it's a combo pack. This is Hang On and Safari Hunt and I got that for $13.99. Uh, two games in my Mighty Master System collection. So one of them looks more like a light gun game where that's like the safari hunt, almost like a duck hunt type thing. I don't have a light gun for the Sega Master System, but if it's something I need to play the game, I'll go ahead and keep a lookout for that in the future. But the one that I was a little bit more excited about was Hang On, which looks like your typical like arcadey motorcycle game. Um, I've always enjoyed those. When I see them in arcades, I like to play them. It reminds me of like an old system that was like in Chuck E. Cheese when I was a kid, but it's definitely cool to see Sega Master System games out in the wild because I ended up picking that game up at a game store in like St. Augustine, which was really cool to see some Sega Master Systems. It did say it wasn't very common for them to have them, but apparently somebody had just recently traded in a console. The next one on my list I was really excited to pick up because my friend started playing it in front of me when we were hanging out once, and this is Immortals of uh, Abram. I don't know what that says, but the game, I think, just recently came out not that long ago, and I found it on clearance for 25 bucks. I thought I was going to have to wait a while to be able to play it, because when I first was aware of what the game was, it was still 60 bucks. 
but this one is a first shirt, uh, first person shooter game that uses like a variety of like spells and magic abilities, which your per your player is like doing with their hands, and they each have like different ones that you can do. The spells are categorized into different types, like red is offensive, blue is defensive, and green is support. Which they also my, one of my favorite parts was I really enjoyed the sci-fi uh, Firefly, and one of the characters from that show is in the game, which I was really excited to see. That I'd just mention it since it was technically a pickup, but a PS5 controller charging station. Um, those controllers die a bit faster than I'd like, and uh, that's okay. But <laughs> so I got tired of trying to charge it with the cable, so I went ahead and picked that up. And that one was uh, $24.98. I actually managed to stop at a flea market before I was uh, heading out, and Beautiful Joe 2. I don't own the first one, but um, this one was only ten bucks, so I thought that was a pretty solid pickup. It was one of it was on a booth where it was like one of the only video games on there. I think they were asking like fifteen. I offered ten. I wasn't like overly invested in getting it, and they went ahead and took it. Um, but you know, while shopping, I found a few games here and there, but none of them were really like a great price. It's kind of hard to get deals these days. But, you know, this one is a side-scrolling action platformer as a direct sequel to the first game, offering, like, a mix of, like, beat-em-up action, uh, platforming, and puzzle solving. This game, for me, is most recognizable because of the art style. Like, every time I see that art style, I know exactly what it is. I'll say, don't kick me if I ended up talking about this one already. I don't think so, but Fallout New Vegas, but the definitive edition, or the ultimate edition. This one was on clearance at Walmart for like $11 and like something cents. I paid less than like 12 bucks for it. And although I'm not a big Xbox fan, nor am I the biggest Fallout fan, um, my husband wanted to play it on the Xbox One, uh, which is surprising because he's a PC Master Race scumbag. But for me, this is uh, just another copy of New Vegas with the TV show coming out, maybe with popularity of the TV show. Maybe the games will be worth something and I can... I mean, I don't really resell, but you never know, I guess. But it is an action role-playing game with open-world exploration and character customization, with the, the special being the thing that people know, like the strength, uh, the perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. But uh, for me, the most interesting mechanic ex when I'm, I'm a backseat gamer when it comes to the Fallout series is uh, the freeze frame mechanic where you can focus in on whoever you're attacking and then choose what body part you want to shoot at. So if you wanted to like cripple their leg, you could cripple their leg. And I thought that was really cool. But the storylines in the, the vaults are also very interesting. Most of them are abandoned, if not all of them. But there's usually like something that had happened and as you like go through the vaults, you get to discover what happened and what got, you know, basically killed everybody. Uh, so that's it for my pickups. I was able to pick up just a few more things before I move, which is just adding to the things I have to pack up. Uh, the total, I believe, was like $94.94 and the value is like $129.47. So I didn't, you know, I didn't walk away with anything crazy. I lost out on a couple of them, but that's okay. That's the beauty in game hunting is that when I go out, I'm not trying to look up everything and trying to get the best like value to resell and things like that because I just don't even bother with that kind of stuff. But it is nice to know that you can still get some games at decent prices and others maybe you're paying a little bit more, but you know, a lot of my copies that I got were pretty clean with the manuals and so I'm pretty happy with my purchases. Let me know in the comments down below out of everything that I picked up, what was your favorite? Um, have you heard of any or have you heard of all of these games? Is there anything that you're now interested in looking for? But thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget, there's a pixelated world waiting out there for you.